everyone welcome back to my channel today it is my june favorites if you're new to my channel i do my favorites videos a little bit vloggy style so i like to start out with like the first thing i do in the morning and then work through so like talking about like skincare goodies i've been loving before doing like makeup things and then hair things and then like fashion and extra stuff at the end so i think it's nice it kind of makes it feel really chilled kind of like a vlog um a very organized vlog <laughs> I'm looking very tired today. I've been struggling to sleep the last few days and then I had a really epic long sleep last night. So I think it's that thing of when you finally catch up and you actually end up more like groggy than when you started. I've just given my face a quick wash and I'm about to go in with my first favorite of the month, which is my toner. If you saw my Korean skincare video that I did earlier this month, you would have seen me talking about this product. It's the Soon Jung pH 5.5 Relief Toner. This is such a nice toner. I never used to be that into toners in general, but this one is super nice. It's alcohol free, it's fragrance free, it's got a pH of 5.5 so it helps to balance your skin. And it just seems to be quite hydrating as well. So it just adds like a little layer of moistness before you go in with all like your serums and stuff on top. I just love that it's quite a basic toner in that way. It's not trying to do too much. It just has like one job and it does it really well. In my skincare video, I was showing my travel size, which I've actually now packed into my bags. I'm about to leave for the UK in two days. And I was packing up my skincare and stuff last night. So this is the 180ml size that I actually ordered and received after I made that video. And I decanted some of it into my travel size, which had run out. So that's why it's looking like I've used half this bottle because I sort of filled up my travel size. My next favorite of the month is actually a skincare product that I reintroduced after my video finished. When my Korean skincare sort of experiment ended, I sort of kept quite a few of the products in my routine, but I swapped out a few for sort of older um, favorites that I really loved, like some Western products. And one of those is the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid. I love this product. It is my favorite BHA uh, that I've ever used. It just works so well. Again, it's like that toner. It doesn't try to do too much you know it's just a BHA liquid there's very little ingredients in the formula so it's quite like minimal it does its job it's so much more effective on my skin an actual salicylic acid or beta hydroxy acid as opposed to the betaine salicylate which is in the Korean BHAs that's just not strong enough or something about that just doesn't have quite the same effect as this one it was still nice but it's just very mild um, but this is like this really gives me the results that my skin loves so I've actually pretty much run out because I again decanted some into a travel size to take away with me. So I might go put this in my empties. Also, I am pre-filming quite a bit while I'm away. I'm away in the UK for a whole month and then I come back and I've got like three days in Melbourne before having to go to New Zealand for three weeks. So I pretty much am away for like two months because I'm not really counting those days that I'm back here because I will literally just be sleeping and trying to get on my jet lag. I pre-filmed quite a bit for while I'm away but I'll also be vlogging while I'm away so the weekly vlogs will continue and a couple of the videos I will be filming over in the UK such as like my travel skincare routine so that will probably come out in August. Um, I'll show you what products I decided to take over with me and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it a bit later just to see like whether I thought I took the right things and whether I made the right decision with the products that I took and things like that so that video will be as I say probably in August that one will come out and I'll also be doing like my travel makeup bag and things like that so it's good I think we will get through two months with videos twice a week I hope <laughs> and then my last skincare favorite of the month is a moisturizer that I raved about again in my Korean skincare video and it's it's actually a Japanese brand though it's by Hadalabo and it's their hyaluronic um, moisture gel I can't remember the full name actually but it's like their, their hyaluronic moisturizer it's like a gel kind of consistency this is actually a brand new tub because I ran out of my last tub I loved it that much so I ordered when I ordered the toner I ordered another one of these as well. If you have more like normal to oily skin, you will love this. It's just like a, fin a final sort of moisturizer step. It's just so lightweight. It gives you that real like glass glossy skin kind of effect, but it doesn't look oily. It just sort of looks really juicy and it looks like watery almost on the skin rather than necessarily oily. If you have drier skin, you might like to top this with another sort of more emollient moisturizer over top so kind of use this as like a almost like a hydrating serum step and then you could go and top with something that's a bit more like occlusive and emollient or even like a facial oil i quite often actually put a drop of a facial oil underneath i i just prefer that order i could also just use this on its own if i had to it is so enough for my skin type right now since it's a little bit more on the oily side 
In terms of makeup favourites, I actually didn't have too many this month. I tried a lot of makeup, tried quite a bit. There was only one really new product that I was actually like, yes, I love this, it's been really great. A lot of other ones I'm still trying to figure out. And then I have a couple of old favourites I wanted to talk about as well. So the first new product that has made it into my favourites is the Etude House Double Lasting Foundation. This is in the shade N02. This is the one with a little bit more of a demi matte finish. They do sell a serum one that is meant to be a little bit dewier and lighter. I'm really keen to get my hands on that, but I'll wait until I'm back from all my like traveling around but I just use a beauty sponge to blend it out and it does give it a little bit more of a sort of fresher finish like it does help it to look a little bit more dewy because I prefer a more sort of satin finish to my foundations and the color of this is actually quite good it's a bit more on the neutral side but it's not super yellow or anything like it blends in really well with my complexion once it's blended out <laughs> but I just love it it's really good longevity Man, I did not take off last night's eyeliner very well. It's like all smudging under my eye. I just think it's got a really nice sort of medium to full coverage. You can definitely build it up with a sponge. Obviously, it gives you a little bit of a sheerer finish. But that's kind of what I like because then I'll just go in with concealer where I need it. So if you're making a Yes Style order, I'd really um, recommend that one. So I've just put on a little bit of concealer. I used the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and a bit of powder. Use the MAC the mineralized skin finish in light but then i'm going to move on to my next favorite which is this l'oreal bronzer it's my lumi bronzer this is in the shade 01 you can't buy this in australia it's very kindly sent it over from a subscriber from the us it's a very beautiful kind of satiny almost glowy sort of bronzer i've been going quite generous with this lately because i feel like I'm so busy <laughs> preparing to go away and i've been not getting much sleep my skin's been looking really quite lackluster so a little bit of bronzer really helps to make me look, um, adds a bit of colour back to my face. I just think it is so nice and I love how much product you get. I love that it's drugstore. If you're in the US especially, I'd definitely go and pick this up. It is so good for fair skin and it just has such a radiant finish. YouTube has really pushed matte bronzers for such a long time. They're like, oh, it's matte, so it's better. Matte bronzers are probably the hardest bronzers to use, really, to get a really beautiful glow um, and something that looks seamless and natural because matte bronzers can look heavy, they can cling very easily. There is a time and a place for them, but I think if you are new to bronzer, getting something like this one, which has a little bit of a sheen to it, just helps to make it look more blended. It looks more natural and glowy, like you can see the radiance. I just think it makes your skin look more healthy. Just putting on some of my Too Faced Love Light and Blinded by the Light. This is not necessarily a favorite. I mean, it's kind of as like a long-term, always favorite. Um, but I didn't use it much this month. I think when a product is older, but I bring it back in and it kind of shocks me again I kind of get a bit taken aback by how good it looks That's when it tends to make it into my favorites rather than that product I know it's always good. So when I put it on I'm like, yeah, looks how I expected it Another product that did kind of take me back and makes me go. Why do I stop using these is the sugar ball cushion? Um, cheek colors from Aritium Aritium from this brand that you can buy at your style. <laughs> this is in the shade 01. Um, I used 05 for the longest time. It's a bit more mauvey, but this is a real true like bubblegum pink. And my gosh, the combination of the color plus the sort of cushiony, creamy formula is just so glorious. It makes me look, again, it makes me look so healthy and which is really important at the moment because I'm not feeling that physically healthy. <laughs> feeling really run down and stressed because I've been doing a lot um, over these last few weeks, been very busy, trying to get ready to go away, lots of rehearsals. And it's quite subtle, like for it to really show up on camera, I'd probably have to put a bit too much on for sort of real life. So I'm just going to kind of keep it subtle. But yeah, you can see it's really like lifted my complexion. These are some of my favorite blushes ever. I think I've got five, four of the colors. But otherwise, that is it for makeup favorites. I'm just gonna put on a little bit of light makeup on like my eyes and stuff and do my brows. And then we'll move on to some fashion favorites. Actually, before we get on to fashion favorites, I just want to talk about my hair. <laughs> I haven't washed my hair for about three days, so we're very much in need of one, but I'm actually getting a little haircut today. Obviously, they wash it before they cut it, so I was like, mm, I'll let them wash my hair. <laughs> but I just want to talk about a favorite hair product I've been using. It's a styling product. It's by Aveda, and it's their Damage Remedy Daily Hair Repair. Now, last month, I think I sort of used this, but sort of said like, oh, I'm not sure it's a favorite yet. It's just what I've been using um, and that's because I find it sometimes hard to know whether like something like this is even doing 
a good like doing a job or if it's just an extra step but when I went away to Perth earlier in the month I didn't take this with me because I didn't have travel size and I thought it'd be fine and I really noticed a difference in my hair with not using it because it's kind of a sort of leave-in conditionery treatment thing that also helps um, it's like a heat protectant as well and I noticed my hair was just a lot frizzier after I styled it with heat than if I'd used this first so I really think it does actually do something <laughs> and it also smells beautiful Aveda products have really beautiful fragrances. I don't really use their skincare because they obviously have a lot of essential oils and fragrances in them. And I try and keep my face fragrance free if I can. But for hair care and body care and stuff, I'm, I really enjoy their range. It just is a nice sort of aromatherapy experience while you're doing your hair as well. So I definitely recommend this. I've actually bought a little travel size to take with me to the UK so I can take it away with me. But anyway, I'm just gonna plonk my hair up. And so a ponytail. I'm getting so many grey hairs, guys. They're coming through so much at the front here. Now that I've sort of like not had my hair dyed for a long time, I'm not even getting the colour touched up today because I just don't really have the time, to be honest. I have enough time to go and get it like cut before I go. But I was going to do my fashion favourite, but it is unfortunately in the wash, which shows how much I've been enjoying wearing it. It's by Kukai, and it is my black merino turtleneck sweater which has been a real staple for me lately it's been so cold in Melbourne I've definitely had to layer that underneath some of my lighter pieces to try and get some winter wear out of them I feel like because it's just really tight fitted to the body you can layer it underneath so well I could even wear it on its own if I wanted to but I typically layer it and I think it just adds a real wintry touch to some of my more lighter dresses and stuff. My favourite plant of the month has been my beautiful Monstera, living his best life. He's actually getting a little bit big and I need to probably remove that shelf above with my heels and move it somewhere else. Um, have a bit of a rejig because he's running out of space. He is so big now that I can't even put, like I used to keep some of my boots either side of him and he's just so big. His name's Manny. He gets a little bit of morning direct sunlight, um, but then he gets pretty low light actually the rest of the day. I hope he's okay, I hope he's not hating me. So to finish off my favorites, of course, we're gonna sit down, have a cup of tea, and talk about a couple of more like lifestyle-y things. A couple of my favorite experiences from this month, the first was definitely going back over to Perth. I sort of left at the end of May, but the trip went into June and it was amazing. We went to Rottnest Island. They have these adorable little critters on the island called quokkas, and I got myself a little quokka selfie, and they're just so, so cute. And we got to, we biked around the whole island on e-bikes, and it was super fun I'll link that vlog below if you haven't seen it but it was really different leaving this time like when I left after my first trip back in March I was like really sad because I knew it was gonna be like five weeks or something until he came here to visit and it was like oh such a long time but this time it was only about 10 days from when I left to him actually moving permanently back home so that's my next favorite is that obviously Mr. Morton came home this month which was amazing so if you're new to my channel, my husband Alex has been on contract with the Western Australian Symphony Orchestra in Perth for the last five months, since like mid-January. I've never lived alone, and as long as we've been married, not lived with my husband for that amount of time. So it was a really huge experience for me. I actually just posted on Instagram the other day um, a photo with a little bit of a sort of caption just around some of my thoughts about how this actually this whole experience was actually so important to me in my own sort of personal development because I really learned to be more self-sufficient I really learned a lot about who I am as a person and not just like as another half of a relationship we were obviously still married and interacting and messaging each other all the time and I loved that but it almost felt like I was like living my best single girl life for five months where I got to focus a little bit on me. It just gave me space and time to really focus on me and I think it was so beneficial especially since you know in the next few years we're probably going to have to like sort of settle down permanently somewhere and start to have children and things like that and then by then you just never have a sense of solitude and space again really in your life for another 18 years until your kids leave home. So it was actually a really beneficial experience in the end and I actually enjoyed it like of course I missed Alex so much and I love that he's back like that is a huge favourite of mine as I say but I think I really valued what that taught me and I think I'm now a better person because of it, I think I'm a better wife. I think I can just kind of hold myself on my own a little bit more, like it's less draining on Alex. Uh, I was still a wee bit depressed because obviously I was a bit lonely at times, like it can be hard because uh, I really missed Alex and I wanted his company and companionship around, but I definitely like, it's like I just learned how to self-soothe my anxiety so well and it just, I don't know, 
I just was really proud of myself in that way and it was also perfect because I finished up my PhD in March and it gave me like those couple of months I had about three months post PhD where I just <sighs> breathed <laughs> I just feel like I've sort of regained some of my personal energy and good but I am thrilled that he's home like I love him so obviously it's wonderful to have him back and then um another favorite experience of the month was just a couple of days ago i went and hung out with my youtube friends at hannah's house she did a little afternoon tea and baked all these amazing goodies she made the cutest little cookies i saved one so i could show you guys i think the vlog that's coming out after this video you actually be able to see like the event and this one did get a little bit mushed on the way home in my handbag but isn't it cute there's work wives so sweet. We had some with our names on them and yeah that's our little like group chat name. I think what's really unique about our friendship is we're actually all doing quite different things on our online platforms but we're all doing them on this online space which is quite a different beast to any other real industry and I think it can be quite lonely at times if you don't interact with other creators so it's been so nice to have a little sort of female support group of women that are all doing quite different things but all in the same sort of way and we're able to give each other support and of course we talk about things that are not work related as well so that's also nice but I'm gonna eat a bit of this cookie let's dunk it in some tea eh? Mm. Mm. it's so good and then my last favorite I wanted to talk about was a favorite TV show that I watched this month with Alex when he got back we kind of binge watched um, a show called Chernobyl it's about the Ukrainian nuclear disaster in the 80s and I honestly I felt really ignorant because I honestly had never really heard of it which I felt really bad like Alex was like this is like the most important nuclear disaster that's ever happened and I was like I only knew about like Hiroshima in Japan but I don't know my family just didn't really ever talk about it growing up I didn't learn about it in school so for me it was actually a really important thing to watch because it kind of educated me historically and of course had us all googling like how do I buy iodine tablets <laughs> post watching that show because oh. I obviously knew like radiation from nuclear disasters is really dangerous but I guess I had no idea about like the extent of it and just how bad it was like it really just is really educational but it's also a really gripping tv show like they've made it really well it's only five episodes so it's a mini series you could binge it in one night if you wanted to start early we watched it over two nights so watched a couple of episodes the first night and then the final three on the last night and it was just really really powerful alex got really affected by it too and otherwise that is it for my favorites this month so i hope you guys enjoyed it i always love filming these videos because it's nice to kind of look back and reflect on the last month i feel like in past years i always like start favorites at the beginning of the year and then by sort of like june i'm kind of over talking about favorites because my makeup's just there's only so much makeup you can talk about you know so i really love that this year i've kind of found a nice i feel like this bit more like vloggy style favorites is really working for me it just feels very natural i feel like i can just actually talk about all the things in all of my life that have, have been real favorites for me and yeah i know that you guys are enjoying that sort of style as well so i'd love to know your favorites for the month as well so definitely leave those in the comments below and until my next video i hope you have a wonderful couple of days and i'll see you then bye